We are tonight's entertainment. What the fuck is this, Chet? Mm-hmm. This is a tasty burger. Were you rushing or were you dragging? You like Huey Lewis in the news? Is this your homework, Larry? Why did you spill your beast? Welcome back. The film scoop. To the film scoop. Oh, will oh, you hold that for a yeah. second so I can pull this? A little snugged up over here. I don't know if that's going to... I'll start it, no, working. it's good it enough. Out. It's good enough. Okay. But just make sure my mic didn't come out. I think we're good. That's mine. Yeah, you're yeah, you're good. fully fully we're seated. Uh, welcome <coughs> back to the film scoop. I'm a little tired today, so I'm probably I'm, won't be my best effort. I'm sweepy as well, but I'm gonna try because I don't want to miss episodes. Well, I want to give the people what they want. They call me the the people's champ. Mm-hmm. I like to spoil them. Yeah, I like to. You know, regardless of the situation, yeah, I take what I give and I shove it down their throats. Yep, and that's moronic ideas. <laughs> that's what I do. Is that what you have this episode? <clears throat> yeah, moronic <laughs> ideas as normal. <laughs> Every episode. Yeah. Um, there's not too much to talk about this week. We'll just go over our watch list, and there's been a lot of Knives Out three castings recently. So I thought it would be fun if we gave our who mm-hmm. we would cast. For a Knives Out 3. And, like, that's such a cool thing, too, because you can you can kind of choose anybody. You can. That's Like, it's not it. like they're, like, a team or anything. It's not like you have to get one guy that does this and one girl that does yeah. this, like, Fantastic yeah. Four. It's like, you can pick anybody. Yeah. And just add Daniel Craig, and it's a Knives Out cast. <laughs> yeah, I was so. like, I was like, oh, these two people kind of have good chemistry together, but, like, this person, I was like... Uh, it kind of doesn't fucking matter. It's kind of like one of the rare opportunities to get two people who would never be in a movie together and then put them in a movie together. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of fun. Like yeah. to me, like Daniel Craig and Dave Bautista. Like, yeah. Those two fellas just bring them on. Yeah. They're just not ever really going to be in the same movie. I wouldn't think. Yeah. Unless it's this. So we'll do that. And we also like for that, we decided not to go with the obvious stuff. Like, obviously, my dream cast would be Ryan Gosling, Christian Bale, Jake Gyllenhaal, Leo. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do that. That's boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just my favorite actors. Yeah. So we tried to do, like, <clears throat> side actors, like, per, like supporting actors that normally would get cast in a movie like Knives Out. Yeah. So. I will say I have, like, two what I would consider big names, but we'll... That's all right. We'll I mean, I have it. big names, but they're normally, like, supporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of situation. Um, do you have any scoop of life? Scoop of life. I don't think so. I have one. Um, I didn't tell you about this, but I got in a car accident. What? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you having such a bad week. <laughs> Yeah, I got in a car what a accident. Fucking moron. <laughs> I got in a car accident on Thursday, but what's funny is it was the most guys being dudes accident you could imagine. Oh my god. I was working and I was driving for work and there was an ac- there was an accident right in front of me. Mm-hmm. Like the car the two cars in front of me some there was some old lady like merging just into a car. Yeah. Just didn't look at all and just merged into a car. And so their car started scraping together and shit started flying up like pieces of the sides of their car started flying up in the road. So I stopped because I didn't want the stuff to hit my car. Yeah. So I slammed on my brakes and then the guy behind me hit me because I slammed on my brakes. Oh my God. And so I was like, fuck, like <laughs> I did not need this right now. <laughs> yeah. And so I pull, I pull into like a parking lot and he follows me into the parking lot and uh i got out and he was like yeah dude uh your car doesn't look like it has any damage and like mine doesn't either and i was like all right sweet and then we dapped up (laughs) and then we went we started walking back to our car yeah and uh and then this old guy came up to us and he was like do you guys follow christ I was Whoa. like, dude, I don't have time for this, man. I'm I'm at work. Like, I, yeah. I, don't, I can't do this right now. Uh, on the clock, pal. And, yeah, so he, like, trapped us out of our cars. Like, we can't ignore him now because he's standing right next to us. Yeah. And so he just starts asking us questions like, do you follow Christ? What church do you go to? 
uh, and then started t- telling me how he runs a church and he he helps out with homeless people and like gives them food. And it's like, oh, he thought you were homeless. No. Oh. No, he was just like inviting me and this in this kid, who's also my age, to his church. Oh, okay. And I don't feel comfortable like uh, saying like, sorry, I gotta go. When that is like what he's saying to me. <laughs> yeah. Like if he was trying to sell me something, I would, I would just be like, sorry, dude, I gotta get back to work. But yeah, this guy was like really nice and talking to me about the lord and yeah and about helping homeless people so i just got caught in a pickle because i was at work and really needed to get going and yeah. uh th- that old guy was more of an inconvenience than the car wreck yeah yeah he's over here but, flapping off the gums yeah anyways <clears throat> uh that's my only scoop of life yeah. so the only funny thing that's happened to me is i got my i got my ass beaten golf by my bosses oh yeah just the way it goes. I also got fucked because he was like, yeah, it might be a bit of a drive for you. And he sent me the address like the day before and I got up that morning and I checked uh, the old GPS route and it was two hours away. Why didn't you check before you had to leave? Again, moronic ideas. That's what I bring to the table and that's what I just gave. Man. Don't check so the they address until the day before. So they didn't think to like pick a course closer that, that would be, like, in the middle. No, because he, he had, like, four guys, and one of them, the guys, couldn't go. So they were like, he was like, oh, you could go. We need a fourth. And I was like, hell yeah, dude. You know, make some connections with the higher-ups yeah, of my they company. Yeah, just, like, moved the game. Yeah. I mean, there are tons of solutions to that that problem. Tons. I just didn't go about any of them. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I would have probably just, like, said, sorry, yeah. I'm not feeling up to it. Yeah. I did see something horrible on the way, but I don't want to I don't want to kill the mood. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and get into my trivia. Okay. Who directed Blowout? Blowout. Blowout. Is that, um... Fuck, <laughs> what's his name? It's not Brian, is it? Brian who? De Palma? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Oh, okay. I knew you were going to try and get me with that again. Because it's one of my favorite running jokes on this podcast, how you don't know who <laughs> no, Brian, Brian De Palma, De Palma is. is. I studied up a little bit. I was like, <laughs> once like that ended and I was like, man, he's made a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> he's made a lot of cool shit. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Brian De Palma. What is the alternate title to Edge of Tomorrow? Uh, Live, Die, Repeat. Yep. Um, do you know what the title of the book is called that it's based on? I didn't know it was based on a book. It's a really stupid title. Oh. Is it something I, I could think of? No. Okay. No, I didn't it's know. It's called one. All You Need Is Kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good call. I'm changing <laughs> that, dude. <laughs> Good call, brother. <laughs> God yeah, dang, they, they what a moron. read that and they were like, well, we got to do Live, Die, Repeat. <laughs> yeah. And then that sat on the page for like a couple weeks and they were like, <laughs> like I'm not sure about this one either, it's fellas. better, but only by a touch. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard to get better than that, but like we can do better than this. Yeah. And then Edge of Tomorrow is just sick. Yeah, that's so cool. So yeah. <clears throat> and then um, guess the film by the cast. Okay. I think this one will be easy. Okay. Mahershala Ali. Okay. Bradley Cooper, All right. Ryan Gosling. Brad Coop and Ryan Gosling. Let me think on this for a second. What the fuck movie have they been in together? That's way too much hotness. And <laughs> one... Oh, is it... Uh... Fuck, no, he's not in the big short, is he? God, it's got to be the sexiest movie ever made. Oh. Place Beyond the Pines? Mm-hmm. Yep, got it. Don't talk down to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that um, was a good one. That was a good one. Thanks. That's all I got for my trivia. <clears throat> all right, my trivia. I think you'll have... I have a bonus question if you want to try because I thought it was funny, but it is, it is pretty hard. I would never get it, but you might. Um, but for the serious stuff, 
<laughs> um, what is the what year did the Curious Case of Benjamin Button release? Two thousand. <laughs> I know it's I know the two year I know the two year amount you know, I'm just gonna stick with my gut which is 2009 2008 fuck I, I was like I'm gonna get a movie he fucking hates and your hatred's either gonna make you remember it more or it's gonna make you not have thought about it yeah I knew it was 2008 or yeah. 2009 Letterbox says 2008 but it's close enough it's fine alright Next one, easy question, if you ask me. What is Jonah Hill's character name in The Watch? Franklin. Yep. I thought I asked you that one time on Trivia. <clears throat> did you? I thought so. I thought you had... No. I thought I did. I don't know. Oh, well. I was going to say I was gonna ask about the weird well, guys. Well, I'll follow up. What's Vince Vaughn's name? Bob. Well, you were just looking at the cast also, so if you did I forget was... it... But that, w- that would have sealed it. I him. was just looking at it, but it also makes me think of Four Christmases when he's like, "Hi, my name used to be asshole, but now it's Bob." I would just say, "Hi, my name is Bob." <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> what is it? What movie is this quote from? Your knowledge of scientific biological trans transmogrification is only outmatched by your zest for kung fu treachery. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I've heard this before. I think a lot. I think it's Black Dynamite. It is Black Dynamite. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then my bonus one that's pretty hard. But I thought it was hilarious. Um, and it's, what movie is this quote from? Kmart sucks. <laughs> Have I seen it? Yeah, you've seen it. You've seen it more than me. So I thought you might get it, but... At the end of it, I was like, it's it's a little too, like, vague. I can give you the line before that. Okay. Tell him, Ray. Ray. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I think he says Ray. Oh, no. Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Yeah, he says Ray. It's uh, Rain Man. Oh. Yeah, and he's like, aren't you more comfortable in your cl- in your Kmart clothes? I mean, and Char- Charlie goes, tell him, Ray. And he goes, Kmart sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Rain Man, like, recent enough. Yeah. I haven't seen that in, like, four years. Uh, yeah, I have, I've I've only seen it, like, twice in my entire life. Yeah. But I saw Kmart sucks, and I was like, no way. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, the brown leather. You should, you should have brown leather. You should have brown leather. I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> the maple syrup goes on the table before the pancakes. They'll bring your toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's all, that's it for trivia. Uh, little two pieces of news. Uh, a few weeks ago, we said that Mike Flanagan was in talks to direct the next two Exorcist movies. And now he is directing the next Exorcist movie. Ooh. It's from what I read, it seems like they're not connecting it at all to Believer. So hoorah. That's probably a good call. Yeah. <laughs> because Believer was garbage. Yeah. I bet that was like Mike's like deal. When that was yeah. his uh ultimatum when he came in. He was like, Listen, I'll direct an Exorcist movie for you. Yeah. Not connecting it to that piece of shit. <laughs> I'll I'm go not doing and, it. I'll go ahead and knock it out of the park for you, but like I'll do it, and that's it. Yeah, I'm not doing any of the other bullshit yeah, don't, that you. I, I don't want to be associated with that. <laughs> yeah. So let me do my own thing, and I, and yeah. I got you. Yeah. Um. It says it's going to be a a radical, um, radical new direction for the franchise. Mm. So, Just like Believer. I wouldn't say that's like a radical new direction. No, I thought that's like what they said about in the marketing. Maybe they did. I don't know. <laughs> they say a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. Um, but that's exciting. We talked about it, like the, the prospect of him directing one. And I mean, he just doesn't miss. That's very true. He just, he just true. doesn't miss. So you take a guy that's the best at what he does, 
best horror filmmaker there is right now. And then eh, him or James Wan. I don't know. Because Flanagan has done a lot of shows, and I'm not a big fan of shows. Yeah. Like limited series. They take too long. So if we're talking just films. Let's see. Flanagan has Oculus, which I haven't seen. Hush I, is a banger. Hush is really good. Doctor Sleep's a banger. So he has two horror movies I've seen. One? No. What oh, I just said. Flanagan? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Wow. And Oculus... It's I, just... I've seen Haunting of Hill House, and that really holds, like... Holds a lot of water. Even yeah. though I don't like shows... That's his only series I've seen all the way through, and yeah. it's like fucking amazing. I remember hating Oculus. I've seen it. People said they liked it, watched it. I remember thinking it was horrible. It reminded me of that movie um, Mirrors. I haven't seen that. It's bad too, mm-hmm. but I could have been young and dumb, mm-hmm. or just just dumb. That could have happened a week week ago. Yeah, and it could have. I just I could just be an idiot. Yeah. Um, and then Juan, I mean, come on. I guess it is kind of nuts to say that Flanagan's better than Juan. Yeah. I mean, Malignant um, alone. Because he's got Saul. He has Insidious. He has Death Sentence. Crazy. Banger. Crazy. Absolute banger. Um, Insidious 2. The Conjuring. The Conjuring 2. I don't, actually don't know if he did Insidious 2. I think he did. And then malignant yeah so that's a lot it's a lot of films i'd say one is kind of batting a pretty high average right a lot of good horror films uh but flanagan like i do think hush i mean uh dr sleep i know it's based on a book so it's not like his idea but i think he had like an impossible task with dr with dr sleep yeah like that's not a, a sequel really anybody wanted or thought would work, and he made it work. So I think that like he's already proven himself in terms of taking over not that the Shining's a franchise, but a property. Yeah. And making it like his own and not making it feel like it's uh, a rip off of the original. Yeah. But something new. Yeah. Um I'm just so down. I'm just so down with it. and But good news for me, like, the best thing about this to me is that that means his next project's going to be a movie. Yeah. And I like movies. Yeah. I don't like limited series. I don't want limited series. Keep those shows and give me the old films. Yeah. So, that's great. I know uh, Evan's been talking about how Flanagan is, like, has been set to, to write and direct a Dark Tower series on prime for like years now Mm. and it's not really like going anywhere it seems there's no updates on it um flanagan said he had like a five season plan for it but i mean there's no news on it and that was announced like years ago and now he's just announced that he's doing the next exorcist movie so i don't know what's going on over there yeah i don't know i don't know if that's going to happen but yeah, I'm super stoked about that. Yeah. Because uh, Flanagan's the man. Flan God. And, you know, Sandra Hewler is? Yeah. The lady from uh, Anatomy of a Fall? Yeah. yeah. Um, she, Fantastic actress. Yeah. She has been cast in Project Hail Mary. Ooh. Which began filming today. Dude. Which means it's official that it's happening. Ooh. Ryan's going to be back to making <clears throat> good movies. Dude. That sounds mean because i liked the fall guy barbie's good i'm really just talking about the gray man it takes a while dude, to get you the really of the gray man out of you your, really out hate of your, the gray man dude. yeah i don't hate it as much as you uh, good <laughs> like you get to enjoy your life I'm, yeah I'm i still like you. have fun <laughs> no yeah no i I. anytime i can gaze upon ryan's dude, cute it, little face I, maybe I'm too hard on it. I don't know. I just keep thinking about the action in the movie and how abysmal it is. And yeah, like when I mean, you're making I'm, an I'd action movie with again. abysmal action and like all the stereotypical like secret agent fucking uh, stuff. Like it sounds like a Tom Clancy book. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was so bland. Dude. Like, once I finished it, I was like, I'm never watching this again. If you ever want to see just pure hate in someone's eyes, bring up either the Gray Man or the Super Mario movie. And Cash, you'll see it in Cash's eyes. Yeah. Genuine, raw hatred. Just Unless you maximum. want a throat punch, <laughs> don't bring those movies up around me. I've Thanks. never seen him hate something so much. Because the Gray Man just more so represents, like, the turn in Ryan Gosling's career. Um, Because unless I'm forgetting a movie, like, prime Ryan Gosling to me is, like, 2010 through 2018 that was blue valentine place beyond the pines drive uh the big short la la land blade runner 2049 the nice guys first man that is just an all-time run lars was in there right lars yeah lars was a little before 2010 but was it like 2007 2008 2008 i think Mm. um but then he took a break, I think, after First Man and, like, didn't really do anything. I think maybe he had a kid or something and didn't want to work. But then, like, his return to movies was The Great Man. And that's, like, it's gotten a little better since then. Cause he did a supporting role in Barbie, which is, like, Barbie's a good movie. And I liked him in the movie, but it's not really, like, a Ryan Gosling movie. Yeah. It's, he's a supporting character. So in terms of like lead roles since that break, it's been the Gray Man, the Fall Guy. What else? It's pretty much it. Yeah. So like big dumb action movies. And that's not what I want from him. And he's good at it. I mean, I get it. Like he's he's very charismatic and he can do anything he wants. And he said that now that he has kids, he doesn't want to do take on dark roles anymore and put himself in a bad headspace and i get that but like you don't have to put yourself you can be in good movies without taking on dark characters yeah Yeah. so uh, i feel like you can do both i feel like he can you know play happy roles and not be like the guy from uh only god forgives yeah, no, I mean, because, like, the nice guys, right? I mean, that's Perfect a example. super happy-go-lucky... La La Land. Yeah, character. I guess La La Land kind of... But that's... No, of, I mean, there's, barely. like, there's sadness in it, but it's not, like, a dark character yeah. or a dark role at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, he's... he's it's not like fun. he's in his head, like, fucking knifing people and fucking <laughs> yeah, go to no. hell. And, you know, like, he was a, just a normal guy in La La Land. But... He's having a, a fun, goofy little time. So I hate the gray man more for what it like represents. It represents the turn in his career where he went from making really uh, artistic choices with his roles and turned the knob towards blockbusters. Turned it up to eleven. Yeah, turned it turned it towards like blockbusters and less interesting roles. And yeah. Project Hail Mary is a middle ground. Because it's going to be a blockbuster, it's going to be a huge budget movie, but if they stick the landing, it's also going to be a great movie. Yeah. Because the book's incredible. Yeah. So, they could fuck up the book, who knows, maybe it'll be a piece of shit, but it's it's Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, and Greg Frazier's shooting it. Like, if they fuck this up, I don't know how. I don't know how they yeah. would fuck it up. Lord and Miller... Greg Frazier, uh, Ryan Gosling, Sandra Hewler. I don't know what can go wrong. Also, yeah. you haven't read the book, but I know like just by the casting, I know exactly who she's going to play. Oh, there's really? someone that fits like right, right there with. Yeah. Because uh, I think there's, I think the character I'm thinking of is Russian. Oh. Okay. And she's German, but like I'm sure she does a great Russian accent. Oh yeah, I, I just I just know. Like I feel like those two are so like close. Yeah, they're, they're neck and neck. If you can do a German accent, you can do a Russian accent. Yeah. But um, yeah. If that fails, I mean, you had every you did everything. You, you had did. all the tools, yeah, dude. I don't know how you fail with that. You got to plan your work and work your plan. Yeah, guy. with that God Squad of a team, I don't get it. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. We can get into the watch list. <laughs> 
Okay. Didn't watch a ton this week, but uh, first up was a recommendation by Roko, which was Fantastic Planet, which Carl saw a good fifteen percent of. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil this for you guys. I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sat down. I was like, "This looks cool. I'm gonna have a good time." You know what's funny is when we sat down to watch this, Carl said. We should put on something long because I'm not tired at all. Yep. That's exactly what he said to me. And he was like, what was the first? I knew we knew we were going to watch Mulholland Drive after this. Yeah. But you threw out like uh, Liberty Valence or something. The man who shot Liberty Valence. Yeah. We we were were like, we should watch both of those. And I was like, dude, that's like five hours. Like total. (laughs) Well, at at the time, I didn't think we were fully dedicated to Mulholland Drive. So that was like a dumb thing to say uh, in hindsight. But I, yeah, I was, I didn't feel tired. And then we put on the movie. I sat in my cool leather recliner, kicked back, closed my eyes, and never opened them until the movie was over. <laughs> this is what happened. But that's me- not true. That's <laughs> not true. Uh, I started it, I had the remote, and I. When I'm watching a movie, I can tell when Carl falls asleep because he starts breathing heavy. <laughs> and when I hear the heavy breathing, I look over and he's 90% of the time he's asleep. And uh, I checked the time, like the runtime, how, how much we had watched. Eight minutes. Yeah, I told you. I sat down, closed my eyes, and then never opened them again. No, but you you kept opening them because you can sense when I look at you. And then you wake up. I like, do feel your gaze on my body. Yeah, yeah. When, when and I'm then asleep. you wake up, and then uh, you instantly go back to sleep. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'll get up. So I wait. When I wake up, I'm like, like the world's ended. So I kind of have like an adrenaline shot, and just nothing could pull me out of the trance, dude. I was, mm-hmm. I was, just I was kind of crazy to like fall asleep during a movie and then like do nothing to change. Like I was to prevent to stone, yourself from dude. falling asleep again. Like if I'm falling asleep during a movie I don't want to fall asleep during, I'll like sit up. I'll get less comfortable. I'll lock in. And you you didn't. You just laid there, <laughs> fully reclined with a blanket on. <laughs> I was like it, the, if that movie was Medusa, dude. I was I was rock. I was completely stone because <laughs> it had me. It had me in its tentacles. Yeah. Anyways, tell I me watched. You, tell me what you thought. Of I it. watched the whole film. All 70 minutes of it. You're going to make me fucking joke. <laughs> I mean, it was a, a long one, so I'll give a, you that. It like, was it, such a baby it, it, movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking episode could, of TV. <laughs> I couldn't power through. <laughs> couldn't get eight minutes. <laughs> After saying you weren't tired at all. It's like 4 p.m. I said, dude, I fucking got this, dude. I'm totally fine. I can tell you two things that happened in that fucking movie. <laughs> That's nuts. That's crazy. Oh, God. What a um, dumbass, dude. <laughs> so, uh, basically, Roko, he said, fuck you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Your 70-minute movie was too long. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch it later. <laughs> No, just, you're not. Yeah, I'm going to watch it, dude. You said it was cool. I thought it was cool. I yeah. gave it a three and a half because I watched the whole thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I watched gonna, the whole film. I'm going to fast forward eight minutes in and I'm going to pick up right where, where I left off. Yeah. Right I, uh, after the opening credits. <laughs> um, I thought it was good. I gave it a three and a half. I thought it had a nice social commentary. Pretty ahead of its time very ahead of its time music as I was watching it I realized how many samples of like hip hop songs are from Fantastic Planet which I didn't know I can play a couple little snippets of a couple songs that I noticed one of them is Insomniac by Mac Miller give me this one hell yeah that's from Fantastic Planet that That just sounds so cool too yeah I'm sure what was that, whatever was going on at that time, it was really cool. Yeah, this too. That's from Fantastic Planet. That's yeah. an XXX Tentacion song. 
Yeah. The music so just, for Fantastic Planet is crazy. I want to know if those samples, like some uh, producer just found those and the artists had no idea where they came from, just thought they sounded cool. Or if like Mac Miller was watching Fantastic Planet and was like, dude, this is fucking, this is hard. Like we need to loop this. Because <laughs> I'm see... curious if like those two people knew what Fantastic Planet was or if it was just a a producer or some guy. But if I'm not mistaken, I think Mac Miller did really like movies. I think he did. So that seems like maybe he watched Fantastic Planet. Yeah. Um, but I don't know about XXX. He doesn't strike me as the Fantastic Planet type. XXX? Yeah. Yeah. He probably, <laughs> he probably dozed on that one. Yeah. Mac Miller seemed to like movies a lot, though. Yeah. He, he has a snippet of, like, an audio clip of Goodwill Hunting in his uh, song called Soulmate. Which is pretty awesome. And he gotta go see a about a girl. Stuff. Yeah, he he references a lot of movies in his music, and uh, he was in like one of the scary movies, I think. Oh, was like, he? Scary Movie Three or something? One of the ones with Snoop Dogg. Oh, I don't know. It's like was... a parody movie or something. But yeah. he's in, anyways. Um. But yeah, the music's really cool, and it does not sound like music that they were making in the seventies. No, it at does all. not. Like it's it's pretty crazy. Um, but I like the animation. Very very hand drawn. Like it looks like just drawings that people lined up to. Like when you have a a notepad and you draw the ball bouncing on it. Yeah, and you yeah. Flip yeah. the notes. That's how this felt for yeah. like an hour and ten minutes, which is very cool, and. Just really neat. Yeah. Short run time. Never really got too too stale or anything. I enjoyed it. And then right after that, we watched Alan's recommendation. Mulholland Drive. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Alan because he was talking shit about uh, your review on it. Yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was. Yeah. Um, Mulholland Drive first real David Lynch because I've seen Dune but that doesn't count yeah first actual David Lynch probably not the best David Lynch to start with probably could have eased in a little more yeah started started with Eraserhead Elephant Man Eraserhead seems like an advanced first watch I mean not not to me no it was one of his first movies and seems like a pretty like simple film I mean I don't know I remember it being fucking really weird and not being able to make heads or tails of what the hell was happening I just feel like if you asked a David Lynch fan what film to start with they'd probably say Racerhead well you know more than me I think I have seen Elephant Man though I feel like I may like Elephant Man I think Elephant Man made me cry when it I was probably, a youngster it might make me too yeah um, Does it have Anthony, is it Anthony Hopkins? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Well, he's in one of them. I don't know if he's in the David Lynch one. I'm I've seen think. a black and white Elephant Man movie. I know David Lynch's is white. Black <laughs> black and white. <laughs> All I right. don't know why it <laughs> came out like that. I did, yeah, I didn't Elephant mean it Man. in the way that you thought I meant. Yeah, it, yeah. Hopkins is in the David Lynch one. Is um, it in color or is it black and white? It's black and white. Okay. Uh, on purpose. Like it. It came out in 1980, so it was intentional. I don't know. I've seen. I've definitely seen an Elephant Man, and I have definitely cried during an Elephant Man. Yeah, I need movie. to. I need to check it out. But first, David Lynch, and so I watched Mulholland Drive, and it went off. And I was like, "Man, didn't like that." <laughs> that was the first reaction. Didn't like that. Yeah. And uh, do you remember what I asked you? At the, like at the what, end? Like, what, if we said anything to each other after it ended? Uh, I think you asked me what I thought, and I was like, don't really know. And then I, I went to Sleepy Town. Yeah. It's a confusing movie, and I didn't, I didn't really like it much. I gave it a two right when it ended. And then I went to Letterboxd and read top reviews on Letterboxd. Mm-hmm. And one of the top reviews... 
basically gave what they thought the movie was. They explained what they thought it was. And then I instantly liked the movie a little more. Because I'm not going to get into spoilers since it's not in the title of the episode. But I understand more what the movie is and how a lot of the choi- a lot of the things that bothered me were intentional. Yeah. Which I get, but I also think that it's it's just just because I understand what the movie is now doesn't mean it's an enjoyable watch. Yeah. And I didn't hate watching it the first time because I was waiting for answers. I was yeah. curious. I was yeah. curious to find out what was going on. And then you don't really get any. So at the end of the movie, I was a little disappointed. But now that I know what it's about, I looking back on watching it, I can't imagine it being a very fun movie to rewatch. But from everything I've heard, everyone says it's like really good to rewatch and that you'll like it a lot more and it's a lot more fun and a lot more entertaining when you know what's going on and I can't speak on that I haven't seen it twice but <clears throat> it doesn't seem like something I would enjoy wanting to watch again especially with the runtime because I, yeah. I thought for what the movie is two hours and 16 minutes is a little long no I, I agree with the runtime being long I also yeah I, I don't see myself enjoying a rewatch because of like there is kind of a twist, mm-hmm. and because of the twist, it seems like I would care less about certain events that happen in the movie. Yeah, it it takes out the mystery of it. Because when you first watch it, the whole reason I was not hating the whole movie was because I was curious to find out what was going on. Yeah. And then when you find out, like sort of what's going on doesn't matter Eesh. it's like <laughs> yeah. i don't know it's not the most fulfilling thing so yeah. i understand what it what it's going for but that still doesn't mean it's fulfilling to me as a movie and something that i would want to rewatch yeah. but other than that i can't say much because i don't want to get into spoilers and uh i haven't seen it twice i've only seen it the once so I can't speak on rewatching. Everyone says it's a great movie to rewatch. I guess I'll have to take their word for it. Yeah. But as of now, I moved it up from a two to a three. So that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's like I'd say it's an above average movie. <clears throat> and it's I appreciate the creativity and, and David Lynch is always gonna try to do something unique. But I just don't know if it's for me. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I landed with it as well. I was gonna go like two and a half, but it is very different. It doesn't feel like anything else I've seen, so that kind of gave it like a bit of an edge. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of we talked about it a little bit, but like you know, there's movies that are very ambiguous, and you want to dig into them and figure out what's going on. <clears throat> and we compared it a lot to Persona when we watched it. Or not a lot, but we kind of compared it to Persona and like how by the time Persona ended and Mulholland Drive ended, we both had like the same amount of lack of information. Mm-hmm. But me and you both like were more interested in Persona than trying to dig up what the fuck Mulholland Drive was mm-hmm. getting at, you know? Yeah. And that's... I think one of the reasons is a persona is nearly an hour shorter. Yeah. Big, dif- big, big difference. Huge. Um, runtime matters a lot to me. I yeah. don't like, I don't like to feel like I'm getting bored when I'm watching a movie and B persona never tells you what <clears throat> the movie is. There's certain things in Mulholland drive that when you look back on it, you're like, okay, this is this. And this is this. Yeah. Persona doesn't do that. Like, Persona could be a lot of different things. And there's a lot of theories you can come up with about what everything means. Mm-hmm. Mulholland Drive 
isn't as much like that. There's a couple things like the opening shot, like what the fuck is that? What the fuck's <laughs> yeah. going on? Still don't know what that means. I don't know if anyone will ever get be able to tell me what that means. But overall, there's like one big thing in Mulholland Drive that is like the twist. Yeah. And Persona doesn't have that. Persona has like hints at a twist or hints at something could be something. Yeah. But it never says it doesn't give you enough to fully commit to like, oh, this that's what Persona's about. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe if you've seen it like four times and you've read a bunch of essays and analysis, maybe you can feel like that with Persona, but most people after one watch of Persona if you can tell me what that movie is, uh, Bravo. Yeah. Why don't you claps. go ahead and solve world hunger, too? Yeah, fucking claps. I bet they have a, a spot for you at MIT. You <laughs> yeah, build, dude. Build the next Google. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about Mulholland. I, it's kind of a uh, T, TBD yeah. with Mulholland. First watch, didn't love it. But apparently it gets better. We'll have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see if it gets better. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if David Lynch is going to be my guy. Yeah, I don't I don't know about... I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure if him. we get along. Yeah. I was definitely disappointed, too, with how how highly people hold Mulholland Drive, like, up in their standards of, like, movies. Mm-hmm. So, maybe I was kind of overhyped going into it, too, because I was yeah. really excited to watch it. Yeah. Um, my buddy Alex, his letterbox review, I believe, says... Best movie of the 21st century. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. Which is just insane to me. Um, I get that people like it, but I don't understand what basis that could be. That it's could the be only on. movie he's seen from the 21st century. That has to be it. <laughs> that has to be it. He's only seen Mulholland Drive in the open house. Yeah. That's that's the only option here in the Mario movie. Yeah. Um. Because it's good, but, I mean, 21st century, are, are we joking? Yeah, like, he's he's messing around. Like, that's not even, it. we don't need to linger on it, on it too much. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're not the biggest fans of it, but it could go up in the future. We'll have to, we'll have to dive deeper into David Lynch, see what he's all about, yeah. see, what, see what turns his clock. I definitely want to watch Eraserhead. I want to watch Eraserhead, up. Elephant Man. There's buzz around Lost Highway. Could be cool. Um, Blue Velvet, people really like. Mm. So we'll have to... Have to dive have to play in. Play around with them a little bit. Yeah, and people really like Twin Peaks, too, but that's a series. Yeah, I'll have to take him out back and see what he's all about. Oh, wow. Very graphic. Take him out back and pull his pants down, see what he's working with. Very graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, next up, we watched In a Violent Nature. Really excited for In a Violent Nature going into it. Um, and it didn't really deliver. I, I don't know what I thought it was going to be. Like, the trailer for it showed me what the movie was going to kind of be about. Mm-hmm. And that's what I got. And I was like, ah, this was less cool than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, but, I mean, you can hope that when you see a trailer that there's stuff that they aren't showing you and that there's more to it. Yeah. Once you get in there. Yeah. There's not. <laughs> no. I mean, so go like, ahead in a violent, like this isn't a huge spoiler cause it's in the trailer giving you like the vibe of what the movie is, but it's like a slasher through the killer's perspective almost. Mm-hmm. And in slasher movies like Friday the 13th and stuff, they walk around everywhere. They don't ever run. They're not in a hurry to yeah. get from A to B. Yeah. And that's no exception here. They don't, they don't have here. a moped to get around. Yeah, that's no exception here. There's a lot of fucking walking through the woods. Uh, too lot. much, I'd say. I'd, a lot of walking through the woods. I want to know how long the script was to this movie. Like nine pages? I can tell you right now, if you nine take pages, out... seven of them are walking. <laughs> if you cut out all the walking through the woods... This movie is like 45 minutes long <laughs> at the most. Yeah. It's crazy. That's, that may be too much. 45 minutes? That may be 
to like being generous. It is. <laughs> Cause there's like, there's a, a decently long sequence at a campfire. That's about the only one that like, isn't walking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too much into spoilers cause it's new, but it did have me intrigued by the trailer, but I was definitely hesitant. I, mm. I said, this is a cool idea. I love when people try something new, try to break the rules. We'll have to see, because this could be really boring. Yeah. And I was pretty much right. <laughs> yeah. I respect that it's trying to do its own thing, but I think it would have worked much better as a 20, 25 minute short film. Yeah. Than 15, maybe even than an, a feature length film. It doesn't feel like there's enough to do it doesn't feel like there's enough to explore um maybe if this type of movie was done in a different environment that wasn't the woods maybe you can get away with it more like let's say it's it's a movie about someone like this but he's in new york and you're following him around for an hour and a half killing people trying not to get caught but you're only seeing his perspective it would need something more like fast paced yeah for this to work and this is not that this is very much <laughs> not. not that um don't go watch this if you're at all tired yeah if you're the tiniest bit sleepy don't watch this yeah and there are some good things about it i think the sound design's great i think that there's some great kills in it very memorable kills. Yeah. So if that's your thing with horror, you just want to see good kills, this will probably do it for you. Yeah. But I like the ending shot too. The ending shot is ending really shot's cool. good. But I heard someone good like someone review the movie and they made a good point and they said the last ten minutes kind of takes a turn in terms of what the movie has been versus what it is in the last ten minutes. And they said and basically uh for the last 10 minutes, you're not with the killer. Yeah. And he said, in the last 10 minutes is the most, in, like, tense the movie ever gets. It's the most intense, like, what's going to happen uh, on the edge of your seat that you get in the whole movie. Yeah. And that's bad. Yeah. Because it's proving that your, your movie your doesn't idea, work. Yeah. Your concept your, is your not Your 90% of your movie is tenseless. It, yeah it has no stakes or anything and that's a really good point because i agree um you're just kind of like going through the motions when you watch this movie yeah like it's cool for the first 10 minutes following this guy around and they try to drop some backstory and some lore and this is who he is this is why he is the way he is um but it's very cliche stuff yeah. It's very basic stuff. It's not anything you haven't seen before. And I was listening to Cody Leach talk about this movie, and he said that he didn't. He felt the same way we did. Like okay. it has a couple uh, decent cinematography, good kills, good sound design, it, but very boring, very slow. And he said that he saw it at a festival <clears throat> where the director was there and gave a Q and A. And he said that him hearing the director's Q and A made him dislike the movie more. Oh my God. Because the director was basically saying like to every question someone asked, um, he was like, well, yeah, that's why we did it because you're not supposed to do that. And we wanted to, we wanted to, uh, break the rules. And even when people were like, you know, you know that this decision you made is going to frustrate fans. So like, why, what made you go with that decision? And he was just like doubling down on, oh, well, that's because, uh, that's because everyone else does it this way. So we wanted to do it the opposite way and, uh, give fans, uh, the opposite of what they wanted. And it's like, just because you're breaking rules doesn't mean you should. Yeah. And I'm, I'm all for like breaking movie making rules and doing something different, doing something unexpected, doing things that sounds crazy. But there needs to be a reason behind them other than just to break the rules. Yeah. Like, 
Pulp Fiction, for example, breaks every rule there is in screenwriting. And the reason he Tarantino broke the rules is because there's a payoff at the end once you put everything together. Yeah. And it creates more uh, mystery and more intrigue when you watch the movie because you're trying to figure out how all these pieces click together. Yeah. That's the reason. There, there, it's not just, oh, because I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the reason that you break the rules like that. And... Or if someone makes a movie where there's no dialogue, really. Barely any dialogue. And say, like, Mad Max Fury Road. Well, George Miller made Mad Max Fury Road so dialogue because he wanted to tell the story visually. And, and film is a visual medium, and he wanted to... When he set out to make Fury Road, he, his goal was, how can I tell a story through action? Yeah. Because it's very easy to tell a story with dialogue. And that, like, that makes sense doing an action movie and trying to tell the narrative through action. Yeah. Like that makes sense. Yeah. But you're doing a horror movie and you're making a decision that detracts from the horror element of it. But it doesn't have any motive. Like him making these decisions doesn't have any purpose or any motive behind why he made the decisions other than just to be different. Yeah. And that's not how you make a movie. Exactly. Like there should be a reason behind every decision that you make. Other than just ah, because I want to be I want to be edgy and I want to be a hipster and do stuff <laughs> different just just cause yeah uh, to prove how weird I am and that's just not a good that's not a reason at all so I just can't really respect that and also good filmmakers um, they try to uh, they care about their audiences and they want to make good movies for them yeah. They do, most good filmmakers do follow their own vision, and you can't listen too much to like, oh, will fans like this, will they not? But overall, they are trying to deliver a good movie to the audience and to yeah, their fans. Yeah, they have a specific emotion that they're trying to elicit in the audience, Yeah, and they, and they're it, trying to get that. And the impression with this guy is just, isn't, isn't really that. It doesn't seem like he really cares about if his audience is entertained or if they get bored because he just looks cool for doing something different. And I just can't really, I just can't really uh, respect that. And he could have just, like he could have said, Oh, I wanted to do it. I wanted to tell the story this way uh, to see if, if it would make the audience, to see the power of perspective and see if the audience would sympathize with the killer instead of the audience because they spend more time with the killer. Yeah. And that's a fantastic reason. Yeah. Does that mean the movie will work and prove your point? No, it doesn't mean that. But if that's your goal, it's like, could I make a movie where the audience is rooting for the killer just because he's the person we spend more time with? Yeah. Even if he isn't justified and he's not a good person, and he's killing innocent people, like, just because we spend more time with him, would that make the audience favor him? Yeah. That's an interesting idea. He could have just said that. That is kind of nuts that you just pull that out of your ass like that. Yeah. Because that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it, that's, that's what pretty frustrates awesome. me so much about this guy and, like, his attitude towards the movie. Yeah. It seems a very, like, fuck you type of attitude towards people that are watching your movie. Yeah. So, uh, that, it didn't lower my score at all. It was a two before I heard that and it's a two now, but yeah, it doesn't make me want to raise it anymore. And like, I could never imagine rewatching this movie. Oh, fuck. No. Maybe like showing someone a kill on YouTube being like, dude, check this out. Yeah. <laughs> Cause there's a pretty gnarly kill. Uh, can't really say anything without getting into yeah. spoilers, but there's you'll know it when you see it. Uh, <laughs> if you watch the movie, you'll know it. It's pretty insane. Is that the one I laughed at? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you laughed at it on the on the cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty nuts one. <laughs> that one's um, pretty rough. Yeah, but it's 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 boring. It's it's really slow, and I don't think the concept works. Yeah. I'm glad that this movie got it out of the way, and now that whole idea is just like, okay, didn't work. Yeah. Like, nice try, 
Yeah, but it's fine. Like, sometimes you try, you fail, you try again. Or maybe they could try it with, like, a more entertaining villain than s- some idiot that walks through the woods and doesn't talk. Maybe if you had something like... Um, maybe if you had, like, a Freddy movie. Someone see, someone that more entertaining work. to follow. Because my, my mind went to the uh, Leprechaun movies when he's riding around on his little tricycle. That'd be fun. That'd be hilarious. You know, that's... Now that I'm thinking about it, isn't this kind of what uh, Saw 10 did? I don't like, remember Saw 10. The one we... The most recent one. Oh, yeah. Like kind of. Like telling the story through... What's yeah. his name? John Kramer? Yeah. Because um, he's a bad guy, but... Sort... Like, he's he's morally ambiguous. Like, he, he does fucked up shit, but normally... He does it to people who deserve it. Yeah. Um, I say normally because there's times where it's like, you fucking didn't pay your rent on time. No, <laughs> yeah, fucking, dude. You <laughs> didn't eat say, nail salad. <laughs> you didn't say thank you to the fast food worker. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tip the pizza guy. Now you have to break your femur. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to do brain surgery on yourself. <laughs> that's you, my. That's a big problem. You didn't pay it forward and broke the cycle at Starbucks four months ago. <laughs> Gouge out your eyeballs. <laughs> you didn't round up to the nearest dollar at Panda Express to donate to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Now cut your fucking heart out. <laughs> now fill up this lemonade pitcher with your blood until I'm satisfied. <laughs> you mixed trash and recycling. <laughs> now cut off your fucking head. <laughs> You threw a banana peel out of the window because you thought it was biodegradable, but there was a sticker on the banana. It's and compost! That's not, <laughs> and that is not biodegradable, so you littered. Now fucking eat this fucking bleach. How about that, idiot? How about you go fucking die? Oh, God almighty. Uh, so that's why I said most of the time. Yeah. Uh, they deserve it. But I think that's like... That's an example of the movie, like, what this movie's trying to do, but better. Yeah. But ma- it makes more sense to do it. And uh, there's dialogue, and the main character, you know, the main character talks. But that's also kind of like an anti-hero thing. Like, John yeah. Kramer isn't just a straight-up villain. Yeah. Um, You can see the way he treats, like, normal people, the way he treats kids, women. Like, he's... Unless I'm forgetting something. But it, it seems like I mean, he's he a does pretty kill normal guy. Women. Huh? He does kill some women. Yeah, but they deserve it. Like I said, they, you know. Dude, I think he kills one girl because, like, she's a prostitute. Really? I think it's been a while since I've seen the Saul movies, but I remember thinking, like, ah, she's she's kind of, like, getting the short end of the stick here. I remember the girl that turns into, like, his, his little... Apprentice. Like, um, muse. Oh, uh, yeah. She Amanda. was just addicted to drugs. Yeah, she was just a drug addict. Which I get is bad, but it's not harming anyone else. Like, it's... It seems kind of fucked up. Yeah. Because normally drug addicts are drug addicts because their life is fucked. Yeah. And they're trying to find a way to, like, manage it. Yeah. And make it suck less. Which, is that a good way to go about it? No. But I'm saying, like, it's not... Like, you're putting... Uh, murderers in the same conversation as like drug addicts yeah. and I don't think instead that's... you should come help me kill people yeah because that's better than doing drugs yeah <laughs> what the fuck John <laughs> you're nuts dude yeah so I do think the concept maybe could work but not with this type of character this yeah. is basically like Jason Voorhees 2.0. I thought that's what it was when the first when the trailer first when I first saw the trailer I was like oh dude are they doing like a new Friday the Thirteenth reboot and it wasn't yeah um and the the catalyst for the movie existing is like kind of stupid yeah we, we talked, talked about, about it that. on the ride home but when they explain why this character is like killing people and how this came about it's really dumb. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all, really. You you have to uh, dispend disbelief. Yeah. Is that is that the right word? Dispend? Suspend. Suspend. Yeah. Ah. 
close words. enough. <laughs> um, it yeah, there's sort of like a uh, I'm not gonna say it. it. It gets into spoilers, but anyways, not not the biggest fan. Yeah, of in a violent nature. Yeah, but definitely check it out. Form your own opinion. There's there's some people that really like it. So shout oh, out. Oh, I them. didn't know that. Yeah, there's on my letterbox. There's a couple four and a halfs. Holy cow! Which is pretty nuts. They the, like to have a good time. Wide majority of people are like two to three. Gotcha. To three and a half at the most, but not not a not a big fan. Uh, what did this guy direct other than this? Oh, a bunch of shit. The ABCs of Death Two. Obviously. Well, that changes everything. Sequel to the ABCs of Death. Dude, this guy has like no <laughs> like you know how on letterbox if you click a director it'll give you a, a paragraph of yeah this director is australian and is known for this and came onto the scene with this this guy's is blank oh my god he's a ghost like i don't know how he got in a violent nature made <laughs> like he has no credits he, he didn't he didn't make shit anyways um last movie we watched was the man who shot liberty valance yep this was your recommendation. It was my recommendation. John Wayne, James Stewart, in a movie, together. Yep. Acting together. This is my first John Wayne movie. Yep. And I What'd cannot you think lie, about it there, Pilgrim? I can't lie. John Wayne has some crazy aura. Yeah, dude. He has some crazy screen presence. Yes, he does. Um, At first, he first showed up on screen and I was like... What's this guy's deal? Like, <laughs> yeah, what's this guy doing? We're talking about one of the best actors of all time. One of the most famous actors of all time. It's this big oaf. <laughs> and then every scene that went by, I was like, God damn. I, mean, I fucking love it. this. I'm, I'm I mean, in love with this he's man. He's just got it. I could watch this guy act all day. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's fucking awesome. And he doesn't... He doesn't like go over the top with dialogue or anything like Daniel Day Lewis and There Will Be Blood. It's not like he's giving crazy monologues or, or screaming or crying. He's he's just a cowboy, and yeah. everything he says is just entertaining, and yeah. he just makes everything more fun. And seeing him on screen with uh, James Stewart is pretty nuts. It is. I didn't. I, I never also just thought. F- like didn't think. I don't know why my brain separates them, but like John Wayne has always just been in a different world than James Stewart. Yeah, like they made movies around the same time, so it doesn't. It sounds crazy saying that. Um, and I'm sure they were both made in America, but those two people seem like they're in alternate universes. Yeah, because John Wayne just, as far as I know, always made always made westerns. Yeah, and James Stewart didn't really seem to ever do that. He was he was more like, it's a wonderful life. Alfred Hitchcock, um, stuff like Mr. and like, Mrs. Washington, like yeah. a lot more San Francisco, <clears throat> New York type movies. Yeah, city movies. Yeah, and I don't know. I, it it seems weird. It seems weird seeing John Wayne and him on screen together. Yeah. I can't explain it. I remember thinking like something else too, like. That character, I'd never seen the movie before, but that character, like, I would, would not see John Wayne playing that character. And same with, well, Because he's no. too, like, friendly? Like he's no, too- like, John Wayne's, like, the hero. Like, he always beats up the bad guys, gets the girl, oh. you know, all this other stuff. And he's kind of a flawed character in this movie, a little bit, like, mm-hmm. and... Like I, I like that. Yeah, I can't. I can't speak on it because I haven't seen other uh, John Wayne movies, but it really is a screen presence fucking battle yeah, in this dude. movie, especially with Lee Marvin too. I th- I'm pretty sure his name's Lee Marvin, but I first heard his voice in this movie, and I was like, "Dude, what the fuck?" You're talking about Liberty. Yeah, yeah his name's Lee yeah. Marvin. Yeah, Liberty. Um, cause he doesn't talk with that transatlantic accent that everyone else talks with in, yeah. in this period. Like James Stewart <clears throat> is the, well, you listen to me, see yeah. like that type of accent. I'm listening here. Yeah. And, uh, Lee Marvin's just like, 
hey, give me that sack, dude. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, he feels so not part of this James Stewart era. Yeah. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. I didn't know people said dude back then. I didn't either. It blew I thought my dude was like a, mind. like came out in the 70s, 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with like the stoner type people. Yeah. And uh, no, like, I, I guess not. Yeah. Cowboys were saying, or maybe Lee do. Marvin started it. I don't know. Maybe that was maybe. the first dude ever, but it felt so weird hearing people say dude in, yeah. in this movie. It did not see, it did not seem right, but yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting. And I bet at the time this was a crazy, like this, this was the equivalent of the Timmy Turner, Jimmy Neutron crossover episode. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is everything you could ever yeah. want as a fan of movies in the 60s. Lee Marvin, James Stewart, John Wayne, directed by John Ford. Yeah, it's crazy. That's insane. Like, Heat. It's like it's like the equivalent yeah. of Heat in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't have too much to say about it. It's a little long for my taste. I think they could have cut some of the stuff in the first act with James Stewart, like, uh, joining his new environment. Yeah. And I I thought that maybe ran on a little too long, but the finale is really great and it has a cool, cool, small little twist and really, really entertaining. It's got some funny moments little stuff that like seems I say seems ahead of its time but maybe I just don't watch enough old movies but like the little insert shots towards the end of the guy taking the other guy's lollipop yeah and the guy pulling out more lollipops like (laughs) every time he takes one John Wayne um taking that guy's hat and throwing it on the ground yeah he's walking out of a room he just stops and throws a guy's hat on the ground and walks out (laughs) just for no reason yeah yeah and that that the sheriff guy (laughs) Yeah, uh, what the court martial or whatever? Like he was funny, yeah. like him being such a, a pathetic person. I'm a coward. <laughs> Please no, I'm a coward. Please no, officer, I'm a coward. Please. <laughs> um, yeah, very full of like comedy in life. Yeah, and all uh, of the characters like really like because I was gonna say something about the runtime too, but then the more I watched it, um, the characters really like had such a charm and like i was like oh that's mr peabody and uh marshall link and stuff like that and i was like this is like cool like i I feel like i live in this little fucking town yeah it feels a lot more unique than the other western type movies of that era it feels like Mm -hmm. which i haven't seen a ton but yeah we need to watch like the searchers and stuff yeah yeah i i just know i've seen hang them high and we watched a little bit of Shane. Yeah. And those movies always just feel so bland to me. But this didn't. Yeah. This, You'd probably really like Unforgiven. It's not like this is a full-on Western either. Yeah. But it has Western elements. And I think that's also kind of what's so cool about it. Is it's a Western mixed with sort of like a comedy mixed with a courthouse drama. Yeah. It's pretty... Also a... like... Little Dances with Wolves esque. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the movie. Like, it's not that complicated of a story, but there's a lot of aspects towards it. Yeah, yeah. So I gave that a three and a half. Probably would have been a four if it was just a tad bit shorter. Yeah. But we also had to split it up into two parts because we had to go see In a Violent Nature, and maybe that makes it feel a little longer. I Could would be. think that would make it feel a little shorter. But I don't know. That could have had something to do with it. But I landed on a, a four with it is what I decided. But yeah. it also feels very nostalgic to me. Um, did everyone else seem to like it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alan gave it a four. Let's see. Ben watched it before you wrecked it. Like, he watched it a few months ago. Oh, okay. And he gave it a four and a half. And, oh, Alex has it at a five star. Hell yeah. I'm glad I so I did good with my recommendation. It's yeah. awesome. I think Alex watched it a long time ago, but either way, you wrecked a good movie. So shout Fuck out yeah. to you. And now we're all caught up on Rex, and my rec was pulled this week. So we're watching Tom Popo. Tom Popo. Oh, Tom Popo. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but 
that's how I that's how I'm saying it. Tom. Tom Popo. I thought it was a T A M. Yeah. That not be Tam. I mean, it's a foreign movie. So just just change it. Well, we can <laughs> we can figure this out, can't we? Um, Tom Popo. Tom Popo stands for dandelion. I thought it was a type of noodle. Maybe in. Let me see. Uh, 1985. Where'd this come out? Japanese. Okay. Japanese. All right. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta break okay. up the awkward silence here. Here we go. Tampopo. Ooh, got mm. fucked in the Wait, ass. Wait, American dude. pronunciation. Yeah, of course. In America, we'd say it like that. Yeah, I'm talking about where the Jap- fuck are Listen, we? We're gonna watch the movie, Carl, and we're gonna see what the <laughs> Japans <laughs> say about <laughs> Tampopo. All right. Whatever they say goes. <laughs> It's their word. I mean, whatever you say, pal. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see what it's called, right, Buster? <laughs> All right. Um, Moving on. So, yeah, but that's that's it for the watch list. Did you watch anything? No. Okay. No. So, Knives Out 3 cast. Knives Out 3 cast. I'm excited for this. I feel like I have some really cool picks. I think our picks will align at least once. Probably twice. I think our, I think my first two are probably on your list. Unless you're just not as cool as me. I gotta tell you, I don't think any of our, our guys are Ooh, gonna connect. Okay. I don't think um, they're gonna be there. The only rules were you gotta pick seven people and at least two of them have to be women. Yeah, I'm glad you put that stipulation on because I was gonna have a goose egg for the old ladies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Um... <laughs> What's your number one? What's your first? These are in no order, but what's your first? My number one, this is kind of cheating because I'm pretty sure he's retired, um, but Danny McBride. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, dude. That's I, a fucking I had one. two right off the top of my head when you said, when you came up with this idea, and one of them was Danny McBride. I was like, Danny McBride, for sure. That's fucking awesome. You want to talk about a powerhouse on screen? Dude, yes. <laughs> yes. I dude. fucking love Danny McBride. Yeah, dude. Every time he shows up in a movie, I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. He shows up wearing all black and he's like, God damn. Who fucking killed that guy? <laughs> Me and my boys are going to Chili's. So <laughs> Me and my boys down at Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. He's so good. My first pick <laughs> is Willem Dafoe. Oh, he's not on my list. I fucking love Willem Dafoe. He's so good. That's a great one. If there's one thing you need to know about me, <laughs> I love Willem Dafoe. Dude. And he'd show up, he'd be dripped out of his fucking dude, mind. Dude, he'd be dripped out of his mind. He'd be so funny. Yeah, he'd be hilarious. And he's also got that creepy side to him. Yeah. Where, like, you don't know where he lands. Yeah. You know, he could be the killer. He could you could have him be... be... Oh, my God, dude. I just got a fucking idea in my head for a cast that I should have put down. Well, wait and see if he's on mine. And I, then if he's I not, guarantee can... he's on yours, dude. Okay. I guarantee he's on yours. Okay, I think it might be the one I have next. <laughs> okay, but yeah, you could have him do it like being creepy and, and like weird, doing like Green Goblin shit, mm-hmm. but then be like, ah, I'm just messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your number two? Uh, my number two, this is the next one I pulled right out of my ass immediately, Sam Rockwell. I almost put Sam Rockwell. Yeah, dude. I'm putting him in it. And I'm making him dance. <laughs> Thousand percent, he's gonna. There's gonna be a dance sequence. Dude, he Rockwell. would work so well. Yeah, I don't know if it's just after seeing his one movie, <coughs> detective movie, three billboards. No, detective movie. Oh, um, see how they run. See how they run. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why I feel like he'd be good in Knives Out, but he'd just be good in anything. Yeah, he's, he's just so Rockwell. he's so good. Yeah, he, he gives dialogue so naturally, and he's so much fun. Yeah. And I'd love to see old Sammy. Yeah. In Knives Out 3. Um, my number two is Jesse Plemons. It was Jesse Plemons. <laughs> <laughs> I knew him. the first two, like, right off the top of my head yeah. when I had started making this list. Willem and Jesse. Yeah. Instantly God, going dang. in my cast. I picked someone else that would 
I mean, obviously he's not going to replace Jesse, but he, he's doing the role that I would have like Jesse doing in my list. Dude, Jesse would be great as the guy <coughs> who is completely innocent, but he's so like awkward and, and creepy that pe- everyone blames him for everything that happens. <laughs> well, dude, you could have him like, that's the thing with Jesse. He could be the innocent goofball or he could be the like, this guy fucking, he could be the red hair and be like, this guy did it. Yeah, but it would be so funny if he legit, like his role, you find out he was just a nice, sweet guy, <laughs> yeah. but he's a little off, so everyone just blamed everything yeah. on him. You might maybe have a Officer Gary crossover. Dude, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm talking crazy over here, dude. Please do that. <coughs> uh, what's your number three? My number three is Ao. Ooh, I yeah. like that. That's she's a great one. She's one of my one of my two females. I think she's first off, she's a tremendous actress. Mm-hmm. And she's also really funny. I yeah. think uh her line delivery in The Bear and um uh Bottoms Mute shows mayhem, that she too. can, huh? Mute Mayhem too. Yeah. Yeah, she's just got she can she's really funny too. Yeah. So she can really roll with either side of how it plays. Mm-hmm. So she's one of my one of my two females. I like that one a lot. Thank you. My number three is Paul Giamatti. Ooh, that's a good one, dude. I like I that. I need more Paul in yeah. my life. And uh hopefully the holdovers kinda opens more doors for him. And not that he was like hurting. Know, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's a really well-known actor and respected actor, and I think he was nominated back in, like, 2004 for Sideways. But I don't know if it's his choice, but I just don't really see him in a ton Yeah. other than the holdovers. <clears throat> so I just think he he has great comedic timing, and I think he can kind of do it all. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I just feel like he'd be a great fit. Yeah, no, with, that's with the knives out screenplay. That's a really good pick. I like that one a lot. Thanks. I am gonna bend you over and fuck you raw with my next one though. Mm, okay. My next one is Nicholas Braun. Nicholas Braun. Yeah, cousin Greg. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How fucking good would that be, dude? That'd be fucking awesome. I would. I originally had Jeremy Strong on there, and then I was like, Nah, I want someone that's like super aloof and funny and then i was like <laughs> cousin greg dude yeah that's a that's a great one yeah i can't lie jeremy strong would be interesting too though yeah but i don't know i don't know if he would fit in a knives out movie jeremy yeah i feel like maybe uh kieran would work better for a knives out he he it's, would. It seems like Kieran's got a lot more charisma. Yeah, it seems like the theme with the first two Knives Outs is he likes to pick people who seem sort of wealthy. Yeah. Obviously, the first one is because it's a wealthy family, but two is like there's a couple wild cards in there like Dave Batista. Yeah. But for the most part, everyone se- gives off that kind of like wealthy vibe, and the title for. It's not like this says anything, but the title for Knives Out 3 is called Wake Up Dead Man. Oh. And uh, I noticed that most of the cast so far has been British. Oh. And the font that they put it in, the title, kind of looks like British font. (laughs) I don't know how what to explain the fuck that. does British font look like, dude? Like, uh, like a what? pirate font. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a pirate font. <laughs> Let me see if I can show you. <laughs> that's how. Maybe, that's, maybe when you'll you see read that I, font, you just read it as British. Maybe you'll get what I mean when I show it to you. <laughs> Tell me that's not British <laughs> fucking writing. Yeah, right that's here. British font, right? It there. looks <laughs> like something that would. Be outside of a fucking that looks British like, chapel. I want you to imagine the book Oliver Twist. That's yeah. how they write Oliver Twist. <laughs> exactly. See, you get it. Um, <laughs> it, it any scoopers out there, look up Wake Up Dead Man and, yeah. and tell me that's not a British font. Well, damn, maybe maybe I fucked up casting Danny McBride. No, no, because ours, this, this is hypothetical. Yeah. But I'm just saying I noticed that most of the cast so far has been British. I can... I just looked it up uh, a little while ago. 
Yeah, so the cast so far is obviously Daniel Craig, Josh O'Connor mm. from Challengers. He's yep. British. Kaylee Spaney, I think she's American. Glenn Close, don't know. Probably she, British. I think she's British, yeah. Andrew Scott's British. Mila Kunis is American. Kerry Washington's, I think, American. Yeah. And Jeremy Renner's American, so maybe I'm wrong. There was a couple. couple maybe they're just all. There. Maybe they're playing pirates. I'm. I'm just saying, like it's a British font, and <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm just don't. <laughs> listen, when it's when the movie turns out to take place in the UK, you don't heard it fucking. Here first. I don't want to hear a peep out of you guys <laughs> because I told you so. It's a British I could tell font. by the font that it was but, gonna be a British my old pirate font. <laughs> <laughs> Pirate fun. <laughs> God damn. Well, anyway, okay. So, Nicholas. Tell me you're not getting scurvy just from reading Oh, that. dude, I need an orange in me right now. <laughs> I'm ready to plunder some booty. <laughs> anyway, oh, Nicholas yours. Braun was my pick. What, who's your next one? Oh, right. Um, so, I have one here that I do like, but I have a, a possible substitution. Okay. That I thought of after we started recording. My number four is Zach Efron. Ooh, that's good. Because I think he could play like the douchey, like super hot guy. He's like the Batista. Yeah, he's like the the Duke yeah. of this one. Because um, it seems like Ryan Johnson really likes to have archetypes yeah. in his movies, like the cliche, this type of character, this type of character. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he he has great comedic timing, and I'm a big Zach Efron fan, so. I feel like he could definitely make some make something happen. Yeah. But as a replacement, I realized that I think Robert Downey Jr. might be a good fit Ooh. in a Knives Out movie. He would be. He just has... Maybe it's the Sherlock Holmes thing. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about, but... No, he could fit. He could play like the Edward Norton character. Yeah. Like the, the, the super rich asshole. Yeah. Yeah, he could definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like both yeah. those picks. Uh, what's your fifth? Um, my next female. Again, this is kind of like one of my other bigger names, but Florence Pugh. Mm, almost went with her. Yeah, and I picked her because I think I think she's funny in person, and mm-hmm. she was funny. I mean, obviously the movie sucks, but she was funny in Black Widow. Yeah, she was. Um, so if you kind of let her be herself. She can be funny. She is a great, serious actress as well. Mm-hmm. Just all around heavyweight. So yeah. threw her on there. Just one of the best actresses working. Yeah, and she can do anything. So yeah. it's never going to be a bad idea to cast her. I like that. Um, my last male is John Cena. Dude, I was so close. <laughs> I was so close, but I was like, oh, they had Batiste in the last one. I don't want to do another like big muscle muscle guy. Can't get enough. <laughs> Adam, leave it in. Yeah. Fucking put him in, dude. Yeah. I love John Cena. <coughs> I basically, what I'm saying with my list is I just want a Ricky Stenicky too. Yeah. That's basically <laughs> what I'm saying. Um, I love John Cena. I think he's so funny. And I think he's also really talented. And if you give him some good writing, like he can actually kind of blow the doors out. Yeah, he is. At, he is like kind of a sleeper pick for like a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like people don't take him super serious, but like. He's actually a good actor. I can't wait for him to get his The Wrestler. Yeah. That will... That's no pun intended, but... (laughs) I got you. A movie that... Like a really serious movie that could put him in Oscar buzz, which a lot of people may not think he's capable of. Yeah. But I think you put him in the right movie and put some prosthetics on him maybe and make him not look like John Cena. And I think he's really fucking good. Yeah. There's some scenes in Peacemaker that made me cry. Yeah, dude, he's really good in He's Peacemaker. really fucking good. Yeah. Um and he's also just a great guy. Yeah. Just a great guy to have on a set. Just the best. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my fifth pick. Um my next one is kind of like I picked this guy's kind of like a red herring, but mm. Anthony Starr. Ooh, that's a good one. Dude, first off, he's hot. Yeah. Guy's hot. Yep. You know. Boing. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> so, no further explanation. Yeah, he fits needed. like the high-end, like wealthy kind of guy. 
Mm-hmm. He's really funny. Or at least he's funny in The Boys. Oh, yeah. I think um, so he's funny you, in real life, too. Yeah, if you give him good like comedy writing, I'm sure he can, he's going to kill it because he's killing, killing it in The Boys. Oh, that's a great idea. And then idea. they're also like, people are going to see him and go, Homelander, he's, he's a killer. Yeah. So kind of like a red herring character. I feel like the goal is to have everyone be a red herring. Yeah. Like you want the whole cast to be like, that guy could definitely have done it. Yeah. And he's definitely got that. <laughs> yeah, he's got it like, for sure. He, he could have done it. Yeah. The only thing that uh, Cousin Greg has is his uh, stature. But Greg could be a schemer. He could be a schemer. Like, he could... He could have attack children. <laughs> <laughs> a child could fit through that. An attack child. <laughs> An attack child. Um, my sixth pick and my first whammon. Saoirse Ronan. Oh, so good. I thought about going with her. Um, but then I was like, uh, I already got Sam and Sersha and see how they run. Yeah. Like, I'll switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, <clears throat> I think Saoirse Ronan may be my favorite actress. She is so good. She hasn't done a lot that I've seen, but just seeing her in occasional Wes Anderson movies and Lady Bird and Little Women, mm-hmm. that was enough. Yeah. Like... I think she's so fucking good. Yeah. And I want to see her in more, like, fun roles, like, see how they run. Yeah. Because I thought she was really good in that. And I feel like a, a Ryan Johnson movie is just perfect for that. Hell let yeah. Her, let her flex. Yeah. You know, her chops. I like it. What do you got? My next one, and I, I really love this person, but kind of a big name Colin Farrell I almost put him in mind too really yeah oh yeah I was like he's really like to me he's big but he hasn't he's, really been the lead in a lot he's big but he's he's not really he's like Willem Dafoe big where yeah he, he's a popular name but he's not really a leading man in most movies yeah like I like I was sitting here looking at his name and I was like fucking the total recall remake <laughs> Which is phone booth, phone booth, the and lobster, the lobster, and the killing. Yeah. So I was like, "Give him to me." Yeah, I'm. I mean, maybe he's considered a leading man, but he also just does so many supporting roles that I kind of consider him a supporting guy. Yeah, but it's definitely not <clears throat> like a like a Christian Bale type. Oh yeah, no, like pick no. where it's like, come on. No, I did play around with um. You know, hot off of TV go. I did play around with Justice Smith a little bit. I thought about Justice Smith. Yeah. yeah I love Justice Smith. He's so good. And I, I thought about um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and I was like, uh, he's got he's got everything. Dude, dude, he's so funny. He's got everything. Yeah. I thought <coughs> about um, Joe Gord. Ooh, Joe Gord. Is because good. they, him and Johnson are buddies, and he, he has a cameo in Knives Out, a voice cameo. Oh, really? Yeah. He in Knives Out, Marta is at her house and they're watching the news on a laptop. Uh, and he's oh the, yeah, he's the news guy on the on the laptop. Oh my god! Yeah, because they and I think he's he has something like that in the Last Jedi too, like some type of voice role, like for a droid or something. That's I don't know. crazy. Daniel Craig's also in the Last Jedi as oh a as a trooper. He has a helmet on. And you can't tell it's him, but <laughs> that's awesome. He like showed up on set probably because. <clears throat> him and Johnson were like talking about doing knives out and mm-hmm. like having meetings and getting coffee and stuff. So I guess they were starting to get close. And then he yeah, was hey, like, put Hey, that on. see what the star Wars movie you're making. And just said, can I get in a suit and be a, tr- a stormtrooper?" So he's technically in the movie too. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jo- but Joe Gord, I-, I want more of him. I love Joseph Gordon. Yeah. Right? He's so good. I love him so much. Dark Knight rises. Till the day I die, <laughs> fucking, we need the Batman to come back. Yeah, that's how I feel about Joe Gord. <laughs> yeah, we need him to come back. <laughs> he needs to rise from the pit. Yeah, Hassa, Hassa, who's 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 who's? That's me to Joseph Gordon. <laughs> yeah, unless I haven't been clear. You're 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 untying his rope, dude. You're <laughs> yeah. trying to send him up, send him up without the restraint. <laughs> Fear is why he fails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Have you done your last one? Yeah. 
Colin was, was my last Colin. one. Colin. My last one and my second whammon is Kirsten Stewart. Oh, yeah. Chris, Kirsten. Kirsten. Hmm? Is it not Kirsten? No, that's Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten I think it's Stewart. Kristen. I believe it's Kristen. Kristen Stewart. I think you're right. I'm going to look it up because <clears throat> I will not besmirch her good name. But I feel like she could play the edgy, like, Love Lies Bleeding type character. Yeah. Like the, I don't want to be here, you know, yeah. type of character. Seems like she plays it a lot. Kind of um, crazy that, I mean, really when you look at, like, all the people that we've cast, kind of crazy that they're not, not like, more known. Yeah. It's like, Kristen Stewart. Kristen's a fucking tank. Mm-hmm. And, like, what, like, Yeah. If I can get her in there, of course. Dude, she... It seems like Kristen Stewart never does those gray mans. Like, she does not phone it in for some big blockbuster. Oh, no. As far as I can remember, I think the closest maybe she came to it was Underwater, which I didn't see and maybe was good. I think that was the big surprise, like, good movie of January. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Yeah, from what, I, from what I remember, I remember being like... I remember hearing people like, oh, the, you know, the January stinkers are out. And then people were like, Underwater's actually, like, not too bad. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, she did American Ultra with Jesse Eisenberg. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what people thought about that, but it was like an action comedy, which is cool. Like, she's always doing neat stuff, I think. Yeah. Um, on her Letterboxd, obviously, excluding all the Twilights, she's done Spencer, Love Lies Bleeding, Into the Wild... Panic Room, Crimes of the Future. Yeesh. Didn't love that, but it's still sticking to my point of she's respecting chances. herself and taking chances and doing things that are creative. Yeah. Um, Adventureland, I, I didn't see. Didn't check that one. But out. people seem to like it. Um, underwater, Personal Shopper, people really like. I never even I heard of watch that. that. I think it's on Criterion. Anyways, oh, Charlie's Angels. Fuck. Well, there goes that. Well, there goes that. Uh, that's her gray man. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Well, that's everybody has. You know, <laughs> nobody's perfect. All right? yeah. But um, but yeah, I like Kristen Stewart a lot. And every time I see her in a movie, I'm just like, God damn. Yeah. I dude. mean, you want to calm down, dude? She gets made fun of so much for Twilight, but so does Robert Pattinson. That's just so funny that. Those two actors got bullied and made fun of for years because of those movies and their bad acting, and they go on to become two of the best actors there are. Yeah. I will say, it seems like uh, Kristen's had a harder time like shaking off the stink of Twilight. I don't know why. I think... Maybe it's because Pattinson's just been in more stuff. I don't like... think it has to do with talent, and I think <clears throat> it just has to do with Pattinson picking better movies. Picking things that more people are seeing. Yeah, I think that I think that's what it's stuff that more eyes have been on. Yeah, um, because all the stuff that Kristen did after Twilight, like, aren't uh, aren't very big movies. They're not going to get seen by a lot of people. Yeah, and Pattinson definitely did his fair share of indie movies, but I feel like more recently he's doing stuff like The King. Yeah. And, good time and <clears throat> high the life. Batman high life like he, he started making choices that would put him you know uh, more eyes would be seeing him yeah but I think they're about the same caliber of actor which is which is nuts yeah, because it, yeah. Robert Pattinson's one of my favorite actors they're insane actually that's now that I'm thinking about it I'd love to see him in Knives Out. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see him play, like, a Bruce Wayne-type character. Yeah. In, in Knives Out. Yeah. Like, some rich asshole. He definitely came to mind, but I was like, ah, oh, he's Batman now. Dude, like, there's he's no just way. like, God, you, he can do anything. You can... Yeah. He... Any character in the script, you can put Robert Pattinson down as that guy. Yeah, dude. And... There's uh, actors that are, like, a cheat code to anything. Mm -hmm. Robert Pattinson's one of the guys... Ryan Gosling is one of the guys. Like, you can have them do whatever you want. Christian mm -hmm. Bale is another one of those guys. Like, yeah. You, you Dude, can look do... at him in Boy in the Heron. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> he can do that with his voice. Yeah. 
I watched that whole movie, had no idea Robert Pattinson was in that yeah. movie, dude. The King, Good Time, <clears throat> fucking The Batman. Yeah. Like, he was a fucking French guy in The King, dude. Yeah. What are Wait, you that, talking about? Danny Cook. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you seen... What the fuck was I... What was I just saying? What, what was You're I... You're listening off all the cool shit that Robert Pattinson's been in. Dude, I, my mind just went blank. I said he was like a cheat code. It could be in any role. Oh! Did, do you know about the movie that um, Adam McKay was going to make that got canceled? No. It was an Adam McKay, Robert Pattinson movie for Netflix. Oh my god. And it got scrapped. It's it's not getting made anymore, at least for now. But the synopsis was my, like, other than Adam McKay directing it, like, the synopsis and Robert Pattinson being the lead sounded like a 5 out of 5 for me. Oh my god. And I'm so it mad it's not getting made. So it says, this article was written, like, while they thought it was being made but it says it's called average height average build and it says the film will star robert pattinson as a serial killer that looks to leverage american politicians to make murder easier he's a politician (laughs) serial killer that's trying to change the laws to make it more serial killer friendly That's it sounds like amazing. the perfect movie. Why'd you say other than Adam McKay directing? I don't love Adam McKay. Dude, he's so good. Uh, he made Don't Look Up. <clears throat> don't worry about that. I mean, he has made... It, I guess I don't hate him because he, he made Step Brothers. I mean, he made Anchorman, right? Yeah. Anchorman, Step Brothers, Talladega Big Shorts, Nights. Talladega Nights. He's made some I guess of the he's funny shit. He's, I don't hate him, I guess. And especially this since this would probably lean comedy. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't hate that, but he's sort of like a, a David Leach type guy to me, where I'm not going to write the movie off because of him, but I'm also not super excited about him, him making the movie. Mm. But Robert Pattinson playing that role, like I'm gonna I'm gonna lose sleep over not getting that. Movie. Yeah, dude. Hopefully, I, someone picks it up eventually. I hope to God they do. It's gonna be so. That'd be so good. It sounds average so build, average good. average yeah. height, average build. It sounds so fun. <laughs> like it to me. It seems like it could tap into the American Psycho like yeah part of my brain yeah that I fucking love. If he had like an inner monologue. Oh my god, dude! Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that's how so that's how people good. describe him when they're like, "What did you get a look at the guy?" He's like, "Yeah, he's just kind of like normal looking guy, <laughs> average height." average build <laughs> like so just a normal guy yeah yeah that i'm so mad that that's not uh, gonna happen but yeah robert pattinson uh still making still making very creative choices unlike ryan yes sir um i hate shit on ryan i hate it <laughs> i get a pain in my chest every time i do it but hopefully this is project hail mary will get him back on track yeah, uh, that will look for the light. Yeah, It'll get him back on track. Yeah. No more gray man's. Um, but yeah, Robert Pants and uh, Mickey Seventeen comes out next year. That's gonna be. That's gonna be pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I don't know sick. why the fuck that movie's taking so long to come out. Just gotta give him time, dude. Dude, I think it. I think the original release date was like two years before its release date now. Oh my god. I think it was supposed to come out last year. And it's coming out next year. Jeez. They completely skipped this year. Damn. It didn't go from last year to this year. It went from last year to next year. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, let Bong cook. Yeah, dude. Keep him in the That's, kitchen as I long mean, as he wants. When he says it's done, I'll believe it's done. Yeah. Yeah. I trust his authority. Do you think you're going to read Mickey 7? Probably before not. Before the movie? I still... I'll, I'm gonna do it for Hail Mary. But I don't know. I'm I don't still, know if you are. I'm still not sold on if I would enjoy to read a book before I watch the movie. Well, I know that you feel a certain way about it, but like, for me personally, I don't know if it's something that it, I, I. But that's the same way I felt. Before reading Dune, before seeing Dune two. Yeah. And. Uh, 
I guess that's the only movie I've read before I've seen. But there's movies that I've that I've read that uh, books that I've read that I know are getting made into movies, and I can tell you like me having read Project Hail Mary makes me infinitely more excited for it than you. Yeah, and maybe I, maybe I should like it. It it will not uh, lessen your excitement for it, and I also don't think about the end of a movie while I'm watching it. Even That's, if I knew, yeah. like I knew how Dune ended when I watched Dune two, and I wasn't like, "Oh, this is the part where this happens." Yeah, I think I, that's just not how my brain functions. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like when I'm first seeing something, it's just like I'm just looking at the visuals. I'm looking at what's put in front of me. That's it. Yeah, and also Mickey. Se- I I <clears> told <throat> you I think he I think Bong's gonna change a lot of Mickey Seven. I think he's gonna use the bare bones, but I I didn't love the ending to Mickey oh. Seven. And I think he'll probably change the ending. Project Hail Mary has like a phenomenal ending that I wouldn't want changed. Yeah. But Mickey Seven, like I don't even think Mickey Seven's like some great book. I think I think it's good and I like it. But mm-hmm. Bong, I'm really hoping Bong changes up some stuff with it because there's some room to Im- improve on the story. I got you. So that's why I feel like even more so for Mickey Seven. Like, I feel like you should read Mickey 7 to see how Bong improves it. Yeah. And I think you should read Project Hail Mary so you experience the story the correct way in case the movie fucks it up. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, that's kind of how I feel about it because it, it it's Project Hail Mary has a lot that I'm really concerned about the movie being able to adapt. I got gotcha. you. Um, I feel like they're going to gloss over a lot of stuff that is what makes the book so interesting. So I really want you to read it before you see the movie. Heck yeah. I'm about to get that audio book. Yeah, it's free on Spotify. Yeah, that's what I'm going to start doing in the mornings. Yeah. And the audio book's amazing. Yeah, you, I remember you telling me that. One of the best audio awesome. books ever created. That's, God. It's a, it's a book that is designed for it to be an audio book. You heard it here, folks. Tomorrow morning, I'm driving to the site fucking with Project Hail Mary blaring in my ears. Yeah. Um, it's been about uh full full run time. I was trying to go on a little bit longer. I always like to hit two hours, but I feel week. like for for not a no big release to talk about, no like Furiosa or Dune Two or anything. Yeah. Like we did pretty pretty decent. Um, we definitely yapped yapped quite a bit. Yeah, I know. Uh, oh. I can talk about tires. I watched tires. Oh yeah. Uh, you didn't seem very thrilled with it. I didn't think it was very funny. Yeah, I could tell <laughs> because you didn't laugh. I I'm really liking tires. I think it's really funny. I thought you finished it. I did, but like they're gonna. I'm sure they're gonna do another season and stuff. Oh yeah. First yeah. season I think is really funny. I. It's not as funny as I thought it was gonna be. I will confess that. Like, I thought it was gonna be like smiling friends level funny Mm -hmm. but um there's there's definitely some good jokes in it i think shane gillis has a ton of charm he's really funny um i like stavros halkius as well he's really good and i like all the hijinks they get into the idea of having like the office but like for like blue collar like mechanics i think is a really cool idea yeah i think I don't know. I only watched the first episode and the last episode, I think. But I, I, from what I saw, the comedy was way too reliant on Shane Gillis. Yeah. And it seemed like he was the only person in the show that was funny. And even then, like, it was just, like, jock humor. Which, I don't know, is kind of his thing in stand-up. Because I, I think Shane Gillis is really funny. And a lot of his stand-up, I think, is really funny. But I don't know. I, I feel like his comedy was almost dumbed down in tires. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it was kind of what he's known for, but also like a little, a little dumbed down. Yeah, there's but, there's some some pretty big highlight moments, like when they did the the bikini car wash episode. I think is really funny. I didn't watch that one. Yeah, uh, and also don't really like Andrew Schultz. 
Yeah, I don't really like him either. So anytime he showed up, which was both times I watched the show. That's I'm, the I'm only two thrilled. times he shows up. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm <laughs> That's not the only two times he shows up. Yeah. Yeah, he shows up once for that one and then once for the end mm. when they bring him that cake. He's mm. like, would you fuck my cousin or not? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's very funny, but it's definitely more up your alley. Yeah. You're much more into comics and stand-up comedy and the people in that world and Shane Gillis and... Yeah. So... I'm and you liked it. The Hitman comes out Friday. It does. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. It's going to be so uh, good. It sucks that it's going to be watched at home, but we're definitely going to like it. I mean, I'm going to like it. I got Glenn Powell in my fucking in my house. Glenn oh. Powell and the Link God? Oh, my God, are you, dude. Are you kidding me? In my living room? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be coming, coming all night. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be crazy, yeah. dude. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I've been watching, trying to rewatch season one of uh, House of the Dragon to catch up before season two. Not going the best. <laughs> I just keep putting it on when I'm tired and then going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll 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 catch up. <clears throat> I think it's most important to watch like the last four episodes because I think that's when the time jump happens. Mm-hmm. So that's what's more important is that I watch those. But uh, yeah. Anyways. I kind of got a poo. <laughs> oh, so. Is that why you're, you got up so uh, fast? A little bit. I mean, All right, let's go ahead and just go and wrap, <laughs> let's go and wrap uh, it up, dude. Um, I don't want you having to hurt your little colon. Yeah, so uh, we'll be back next week talking about Hitman. Hitman. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. If you have any feedback, anything, uh, any ideas? As- aside from have me stay awake next time we watch <laughs> <Yeah>. something. <laughs> um. <laughs> If you have any like suggestions, stuff you want us to do, topic ideas, game ideas, whatever it is, if there's anything we do that you think is dumb and fucking stupid, yeah, and you want us to stop, let us know. Maybe we'll stop. Maybe we'll say patooey and keep doing. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, we'll I don't know. Throw some egg in your face. I don't know, you know? but we want to hear the feedback. So uh, leave it in the comments if you have any. And uh, thank you for listening to the film. Film school. school.